you struggle with fear? Bible Sleuth coming at you with what I hope is a bit of encouragement concerning fear. As a young person growing up in the 60s, 70s, and early 80s, I remember being fearful of being persecuted or being a Christian. I understood that persecution would probably happen, and that is scary, and especially for a kid. I was also afraid of missing the rapture, especially after seeing the first movie produced on the end times, The Thief in the Night. I recently read an article on the website Collider. Author Pierce Baugh reviewed The Thief in the Night, calling it a horror movie that unfortunately stayed with you. He described traumatic events that followed his viewing of the movie as a kid, living in fear that the rapture took place without him. I admit to identifying with that to a small degree. I can't say if Pierce stayed in the faith, but I have. Have I failed? Countless times, daily still, but I have learned some things. Firstly, I can't say if what the Bible says is true because the Bible has proven itself without fail. It is true because Jesus is true and what Jesus described as it in times is clearly being played out right before our eyes. So is being scared right? Will the tribulation be scary? Look what Jesus says. He replied, watch out that you are not deceived. For many will come in my name, claiming I am he, and the time is near. Do not follow them. When you hear of wars and uprisings, do not be frightened. These things must happen first, but the end will not come right away. Look at his first statement. Watch out that you are not deceived. Being bombarded with all kinds of stuff in the news and unfortunately even prophetic messages, one can easily see deception all around us. With technology and AI, there are even channels creating realistic footage to support claims that aren't even true. For those who think that the tribulation period happened in the early centuries already, you are ignoring that the diaspora remained until 1948 when Israel miraculously became a nation in one day and the prophecies were fulfilled surrounding. Also, what about the search for a red heifer? that only until recently have they had to sanctify the temple. Do not be deceived. Even well-meaning Christians broadcasting things to come, while others pointing out the multitude of false teachings with a vicious fervor can seem to add to that deception. An upcoming event though, which has a growing amount of hype is the April 8 eclipse. I will say there are some strange things that can be tied to it as well as other eclipses that have taken place. For instance, a significant eclipse took place in November of 1776, just four months after the Declaration of Independence. A few weeks prior to the eclipse, was a major loss at the Battle of Fort Washington. However, a few weeks after the eclipse, the defeated Union Army would navigate the icy waters of the Delaware in a famous crossing to win the Battle of Trenton. That would serve also as a turning point for the Union Army. Was it God's hand? Was the eclipse signaling God's blessing upon a newly forming nation? Maybe, and I kind of think so. There were others, but maybe none quite as significant as the August eclipse of 2017. It was President Trump's first year of office. Under the previous administration's eight years, some of the most anti-Christian, anti-Israel, anti-American, and anti-family policies were enacted in the history of our country. May 22nd, 2017, the newly elected president visited Israel and was the first sitting president to visit the Western Wall to pray and place a prayer in the wall. He then forged a new relationship with our ally that had been breaking down. In December, he actually officially recognized or acknowledged Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. He was the only president to actually say it would be done and committed to it. He moved the embassy there. A few years later, the Abraham Accords would be signed uniting former enemies 
into trade partners. The pathway that the 2017 eclipse followed passed over at least five cities, five, called Salem. Interestingly, Salem in the Hebrew means peace, something that we're supposed to pray for, for Jerusalem. Now the number five in the Bible symbolizes grace. Was this eclipse a warning to the United States that grace from judgment was being extended for a time? Possibly. It is interesting that the upcoming eclipse will also pass through communities with or villages with the same name. About seven cities or villages named Nineveh that will fall in the penumbral shadow. The name Nineveh from a biblical perspective is unclear. It comes from compound meanings such as fish place, offerings, habitation, or strong propagation of the seat of government. Nineveh not only was a city found in the story of Jonah where grace was afforded, but we find Nineveh in the book of Nahum. Obviously, grace ran out for Nineveh because Nahum prophesied of its destruction. Is it possible that the United States, the seat of the UN by the way, is headed for judgment, for turning our backs on God and his people of Israel? Absolutely. Is April 8 signaling that? It is possible. But back to what Jesus was saying. Then Jesus said to them, Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. We have seen that. But the extent of ethnic hatred seems to have exploded, and not only in America, but globally. Jesus goes on to say there will be great earthquakes, famines, and pestilences in various places, and fearful events, and great signs from heaven. Maybe this is evidence that the eclipse is a sign. And are we destined for a great earthquake on the New Madrid Fault, as some are predicting? Well, it's possible. Am I saying that it is? No. I will say that area of the country sees a large earthquake every two to three hundred years. The last quake happened in 1811 which was estimated would have registered above seven on the Richter scale with thousands of actor shocks, some being of equal strength. Supposedly, it ran the Mississippi backwards for an hour and even shook windows in the White House. A quake that size again would be catastrophic considering population. And am I saying that this is going to happen? No. Should we be scared? Jesus goes on. But before all this, they will seize you and persecute you. They will hand you over to synagogues and put you in prison, and you will be brought before kings and governors, and all on account of my name, and so you will bear testimony to me. Are we seeing this beginning? Well, no, it happened. It is ongoing since he said it. Yes, we're seeing persecution rising globally, but he was also talking to the disciples directly. And we're not to be frightened, but make up your mind, he says, not to worry beforehand how you will defend yourself. For I will give you words and wisdom that none of your adversaries will be able to resist or contradict. You will be betrayed even by parents, brothers and sisters, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Everyone will hate you because of me, but not a hair of your head will perish. Stand firm and you will win life. I will tell you, none of that sounds good, does it? It isn't the good life. Living the dream, living the fast lane, it's downright scary, right? But do notice that there is help. We are to make up our minds not to worry. There is another side. Another event coming for the true believer who is looking for his appearance. Read 1 Thessalonians 5, 9. God has not appointed us to wrath. Wrath is going to be poured out on this world in the great tribulation. And we are not appointed to wrath for those scoffing at the rapture. I wish to point you to the parable of the ten virgins. The virgins are compared to the kingdom of God, thus leaning to all ten representing the church. Five were prepared for the wedding, the others were not. Remember that the king said to the five unprepared, I never 
knew you. Now that is very scary. I have to ask, were they scoffing that the king was not going to return? Read Acts 1.11. The distinction is made at Jesus' ascension. The angels said to the disciples, Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking up into the sky? The same Jesus who has been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way you've seen him go into heaven. Now I'm going to tell you, the second coming of Christ when Jesus returns to set up his kingdom is not like that manner as he went. He went up alone. He wasn't on a horse. However, the second coming will be much different and much more violent. Read Revelation 19, 11 through 21 if you do not believe me. In the second coming, he will be on a horse with a host of huge army of white horses. I plan to be on one of those horses too. Going back to the ten virgins. Is a wedding. Why? Because it takes place during the Great Tribulation. How could that happen if there isn't a rapture of people watching for him? By the way, the church disappears following chapter 3 in Revelation. Why? Because they become the bride of Christ. An interesting study that supports this is on just ancient Jewish weddings traditions. The question is, are we going to believe what Jesus said? Are we going to be filled with the Holy Spirit and eagerly awaiting his return? What we have to understand is that life is way beyond the current flesh and blood experience that we live each day, and we need to be looking for his return.